Now Thanks, let's man. come back here. It seems every day the Democrats have a new item they want to call infrastructure. I love this. Here's just some of the things that they think qualifies. We're putting it on the full screen. President Biden thinks computer chips is infrastructure. Senator Ed Markey, lefty from Massachusetts, thinks climate action is infrastructure. Congressman Marilyn Strickland, I guess she's from Wisconsin, she says affordable housing is infrastructure. Congressman Mondaire Jones, this uh, new socialist Marxist from Westchester County, New York, says Supreme Court packing is infrastructure. And Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, always there, thinks paid leave, child care, and caregiving is infrastructure. Well, I don't know. What exactly is infrastructure? If you go into the new Oxford American Dictionary, that's an interesting way to do it, it defines it as basic physical and organizational structures and facilities. That is, e.g., buildings, roads, and power supplies. What's needed for the essential economic operation of a society or an enterprise. That's all. That's a narrow definition. That's skinny infrastructure. Now, folks, the more the Democrats add to the list, I will say, the higher the price tag and the more likely it is to fail. Okay, now, that may be why Chris Coons is putting that trial balloon out there. He's a great pal of President Biden's. I'm just going to say it's bad enough they're trying to redefine infrastructure, but let's take it one step more. It's worse because they want to use this new definition to transform America. Okay, that's what it is. They want to transform America by raising taxes on businesses large and small, raising capital gains on individuals, nothing more than taxing the rich for redistribution of income and wealth and for some utopian thing called social equity. I don't want to transform America. I like it just as it is. I just want to make it more prosperous by pursuing good policies. Let's bring in Congressman, uh, Congresswoman Nancy Mace from the great state of South Carolina. She's a member of the House Transportation and Infrastructure uh, Committee. Um, Ms. Mace, thanks for coming on. So let's just do this. Let's have some fun. Cli okay. Climate action, affordable housing, police accountability, packing the Supremes, and child care, paid leave, and caregiving. What do you think? In your judgment, you sit on the committee now, are those infrastructure? No, and what you're seeing is the far left redefine traditional infrastructure as human infrastructure. I'm a single mom. I care about kids and I care about school lunches, but that should not be part of our infrastructure package. And what we're seeing, and when you dig even deeper, about half of 50% of this $1.9 trillion package really is the Green New Deal and sheep's clothing. But if we were talking about skinny infrastructure, if that were like a skinny margarita, Larry, I think all, every single American would be on board with that. <laughs> Do you remember when, uh, this is a little bit of history, Winston Churchill uh, during World War II, you know, his, his deputy was the labor minister, Clement Attlee, and Winston called Clement Attlee a sheep in sheep's clothing. Do you remember that line? Anyway, I digress. Before but, my time. <laughs> but, it, but it was, I know, I was there. But it was a great line, a sheep in sheep's clothing. But you're entirely yeah. right. So um, what do you think about this Chris Coons, Senator Chris Coons trial balloon on the Sunday talk show, uh, he's a great friend of Biden's, and he uh, threw out the number 800 or something, as did John Cornyn. Now, that would be a heck of a lot more acceptable, would it not? much more palatable for members on both sides of the aisle. We were promised a bipartisan infrastructure bill. So far, that has not happened. There are Republicans and Democrats up here on the Hill who are working on an alternative package to uh, what's being presented to us right now. And that number would be under $1 trillion. And I, That's much more palatable for people, especially if we can get right now in the, what's being presented, only 6 6.5% would go to roads and bridges with traditional transportation, only 1% going to airports less than 1% going to our ports and inland waterways. We all know with COVID-19, we have a severe supply chain issue right now in large part with our ports. Um, we have significant issues with infrastructure, air traffic and control at our airports, for example. So if we can get back to traditional infrastructure as it's defined by every American in this country in a much more affordable format, that would be great. We cannot afford the largest tax hike in American history to pay for it either. And that's got to be addressed as well. You know, you could throw in, I don't think you'd object, rural broadband, not a hundred billion, by the way, it could be done for twenty or thirty billion. You could throw in if there's lead pipe problems in the schools, fine. 
but you're not going to get to three trillion. You could keep it under one trillion. How about this? Toll roads, user fees, local bonding, maybe private public partnerships. Uh, Ms. Mace, would that work for you, the, those kinds of pay fors? Potentially, and I think states should also have the option of, of having the, the ability to make those decisions for themselves as well and how they come up and match some of the funding they may receive in, a, in an infrastructure package. But, you know, as you know, Washington doesn't have a revenue problem. We have a spending problem. We've had it for decades. Neither side is willing to address it, and we've got to start doing it now. We're, we're hearing about $7 trillion in potential spending in the first six to nine months of this fiscal year alone. That's untenable for every everyone in this country who works hard to raise their family, work and retire in the greatest country in the world. We can do better and we should. I don't know if you heard our opening uh, segment, but it turns out a lot of this uh, stimulus, I call it stimmy, <laughs> to boost consumer spending temporarily is really helping China's economy. China's growing at 18 percent in the first quarter with a record uh, export to the United States and the biggest trade deficit in history. We're giving our consumers money and they're buying goods and gadgets from China. I doubt if you or other members of Congress or the Senate really thought of it. We're helping China on this. Right. And we're also incentivizing unemployment with larger federal unemployment checks in this country. Um, I'm from the state of South Carolina. As you mentioned earlier, our unemployment is hovering just over 4% right now in the middle of a pandemic. The only reason it's not lower than that is because we've incentivized people. We've helped them stay home rather than go back to work and be productive, more productive members of society. And so we've got to allow people to, to balance their health and safety with going back to work, kids going back to school, and, and grow our economy on our own like that. That's what we should be doing right now. And tax cuts would actually benefit the economy. We know previous to COVID-19, we had the lowest unemployment rate for every American, regardless of the color of your skin, your gender orientation in this country. And we can get back to that if we work smarter and not harder on this. Thank you, Congressman Nancy Mace. We're going to have you back because you are a very sound thinker, and I appreciate it. Good luck to you. Thank now, you. Folks. A little common sense goes a long way.